Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Will It Steam Controller. If you've never seen the show before, this is where we look at a new game and evaluate whether or not we can use the Steam Controller to play it. Longtime fans know that the answer is almost always yes. Let's do this. This time, we've got the recently released Master Chief Collection to look at, specifically Halo Reach. The good news is that the kind folks at 343 Industries have graciously given us the choice between using mouse and keyboard and a controller to play this game. The other good news is that the Steam controller can output both mouse and keyboard signals and standard controller signals. The bad news is that the game will only recognize one or the other, but not both at the same time. Otherwise we could have had the glorious delectable goodness of analog movement and mouse aiming. But instead, we will have to content ourselves with <coughs> analog emulation. Analog emulation is a technique where we try to make a trackpad feel like an analog input, like a joystick. This is done by sending a signal in short bursts or pulses. When your thumb is near the center of the trackpad, the pulses are slow and even. And when your thumb is near the edge, the signal is sent constantly, as if you were holding down the button. In theory, we can use this to make WASD movements feel like a joystick. In practice, however, let's just say don't rip out the joystick on your controller just yet. It works well enough, but I was never truly happy. Keep in mind, this is after a lot of testing and pulling my hair out. I believe the current solution that made it into the config is better than having no emulation, but it's not as good as the real thing. At this point, I decided to work on the trackpad aiming. It's fairly sensitive with a little bit of acceleration, and low friction for big movements. I even placed a little bit of edge spin on there for when you're driving and need to spin the Scorpion's cannon all the way around to get that sweet 360 no-scope. I also decided to commit to always on gyro aim. Wild style aiming, that is. This is pretty much my go-to setup for any shooter on the Steam controller. I use the trackpad for general aiming, swiping it and letting the low friction take me around for big movements, and then use the gyro to hone in on targets. It works fantastically well, and if you haven't tried it yet, WHAT ARE YOU EVEN DOING WITH YOUR LIFE? I mean, just give it a shot. I also decided to try something else new that I haven't really done before, and that's using the hipfire method on the trigger for zoomed aiming. The hip fire works like this. If you pull the trigger a little, it will activate one input. If you pull the trigger all the way quickly, it will activate another input. If you pull the trigger slowly, but all the way, it will hold the first input while letting you control the second input. This sounds more complicated than it is. I have the first input set to weapon zoom, and the second set to fire. If I yank back on the trigger at full speed, the weapon fires away like normal. If I pull the trigger slowly, it activates the weapon zoom. In the case of the DMR, the most beautiful list of weapons, my favorite in the game. It's an incredibly useful 2x zoom. At this point, I can hold the trigger halfway, and continue to pull it the rest of the way to fire off shots while staying zoomed in. With this method, I can blast away at enemies at close range, or zoom in and take measured shots from a distance while only having to use a single input. In the same vein, I have a similar setup on the left trigger, but for grenades. Daintily massage the left trigger to select your murderous explosive of choice, and smash that trigger down to release your pineapple of death. Aha, I hear you say. Won't pulling the trigger make me also switch grenades at the last moment, causing me to make a fool of myself in front of my friends? Ho ho ho, no, my good viewer. For this one, I selected hipfire exclusive mode which makes it so that both inputs will never be active at the same time. Pulling the trigger quickly makes it skip the first input entirely, so you can be sure the grenade you chose specifically from birth to be the one that sticks onto that elite's head is the one that is tossed forth. And finally, on a more practical note, I used a technique that I haven't used before to handle navigating the menus. When you make a new action set, you can choose to make that set active whenever there is a cursor on screen. Since I have elected to go the mouse and keyboard route, there is a cursor whenever I am in the pause menu. Thus, the controller switches to a new action set called Menus that deactivates gyro mouse movement, turns trackball mode off, 
and turns the left trackpad into a scroll wheel. This all makes navigating the menus a much more pleasant experience. It was important to me to stay mostly true to the original Xbox layout for the game, so that longtime fans of the series would find this config familiar. In the original game, the Use button and the Reload button are the same, X. On PC, they are two different buttons. I wanted to leave the keyboard commands completely as default as well. What I ended up doing was making the X button dual function. When you press it quickly, it's the Reload button, and when you hold it, it sends an entirely different button to the game, the Use button. This makes it operate exactly the same way as it did in the original game. So, I'm sure you're all desperate to know, how does this config perform? I wanted to set some tangible goals for myself before I would be satisfied with the result. First of all, I beat the entire game with this config. Of course, I did it on normal difficulty, so that's not saying a whole lot. So I went back to the first level and cranked the difficulty to legendary. I died a lot of times. But I was finally able to do it, and I'm reasonably certain that I could beat the rest of the game as well. With plenty more deaths along the way, of course. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I am continually surprised at the support you all show me. As always, I love hearing suggestions for games to try next. Thank you very much to Connor Hodson for the suggestion of this game. Keep the ideas coming, guys. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a wonderful December, and I'll see you next time.